Hey, it's Mark Podolsky, The Land Geek, with your favorite niche real estate website, www.thelandgeek.com. And on this week's Roundtable podcast, the first Roundtable of 2019, grr, we got Bearland Aaron with us. What's up, Bearland? Hey, Happy New Year, everybody. Happy New Year, my friend. Um, good times in, uh, in Indiana? Yep, good times, partying with the Amish. I, I love it. I love it. And then, of course, we've got the most feared woman in the country, Mimi Schmidt, the terrorist hunter. Mimi, how are you? Great. Happy New Year. How are you? I'm good. I'm good. And then, of course, the technician. You know him. You love him. Eric, the technician Peterson. Eric, how are you? I'm good. Happy to be here. Happy New Year. It's going to be a, a kinder, gentler 2019 for the technician. Because we're definitely going to be going all in on picking on the Zen master. <laughs> Mike Zeno. Breathe in the mailing, breathe out the marketing. I'm the new target. Well, I'll take it willingly. Love being here. Love seeing you guys. Rumor has it, it's still 2018 for Aaron, though. <laughs> <laughs> it's the latency. Right. It's a, yeah, it's still right. Exactly. He'll, he'll be catching up. And then, of course, the big papa. I love it when you call me Big Papa. Tate Litchfield, how are you? Doing great. Happy to be here, everybody. Happy New Year. And then, of course, the, uh, the brain, the professor, the Sherpa. What's another nickname for Scott Todd from scotttodd.net, landmoto.com, and most importantly, you're not automating your Craigslist and your Facebook postings, postingdomination.com forward slash the land geek. Scott Todd's in a surly mood. Scott, how are you? I'm good, Matt. How are you? I'm good. I'm good. Why, why so surly? Um, I, I don't know. I don't know that I am. Not, nothing, n- nothing standing out right now. Well, we had to mention that uh, you made a surly comment about the long trip to boot camp. San yeah, you know, it, uh, I, I will tell you, it's funny because um, the other night I wasn't necessarily over the weekend, I wasn't like sleeping that well, you know, like all kinds of noise around the house, you know, teenagers, all that stuff. Right. And so I told my wife, I'm like, I am so thankful that like boot camp is around the corner because I am going to sleep well. Like I'm going to be exhausted. I'm going to be laid out flat in the hotel. No, no teenagers waking me up in the middle of the night. It's going to be great. I was thinking the same thing. Yeah, they, they, they with a baby. No, it, it's true. It's it's like uh, you know, boot camp is special. And for those of you who are listening, and you haven't been to boot camp. Uh, by the time this is, you'll be listening to this. Boot camp had already been done in San Antonio, but the next one is going to be in actually Scottsdale, April twenty sixth to twenty eighth. And even the Zen master is pumping his fist, excited. Yeah, I'm gonna go there in April. That's a mi- I can't, That's awesome. That's like it'll be snowing. It'll be it's, snowing here, but not there. It's gonna be so nice. Oh, and, that's uh, a good point. It's always been super hot, Mike, when we've been to Scottsdale. Yeah, but that's the August usually. This is April. Yeah. This is amazing. 2016 was the last April. This is like it'll a still be day. hot. We went to Scottsdale. Yeah. So if you got un- those unused boot camp tickets, email support at thelandgeek.com and, uh, and pick your spot because that room is going to fill up very, very fast. So let's go to our first topic, poor response rates. Uh, Tate, tell us what's going on. So I'm mailing to a new area, sent out around 200 offers. It's been about five and a half weeks and I have received exactly zero Accepted offers, zero hate mail, zero nasty phone calls, nothing. And it's leading me to believe that I have totally botched this, uh, this mailer. And it's, the reason I'm bringing this up is because I feel like we get a lot of people who enter into you know, coaching or flight school and they find themselves in similar situations. And, and they say, well, you know, my mailer was a waste. I, I just, 
you know, I didn't get any accepted offers. I wasted $200 on stamps and mail. And now what am I left with? And I had written this off until early this week. And then all of a sudden the flood came in and, and it wasn't accepted offers, but it was a lot of angry voicemails. It was a lot of rejection letters, you know, you're crazy kind of situation. But I learned some valuable information from this mailer. Number one, I learned that, yeah, my pricing might be a little low, but I also learned that, hey, this time of the year when I mail at the beginning of December, I'm probably not going to hear a response back until January. So I'm kind of sharing this example just so that people recognize that even in your quote unquote failures or shortcomings, there's still something very valuable to learn from it. And if you haven't had a bad mailing, I mean, you're probably not mailing enough, right? Yeah, it's like the, the old saying in skiing. If you're not falling while you're skiing, you're probably not skiing hard enough, right? Um, Bearland, Aaron, have you had a similar issue with the mailing and, and response rates? And, and if so, how did you uh, pivot? Um, I had a county that we'd mailed consistently for a long time and had a pretty consistent response rate. And then a few months back, it just kind of stopped. I mean, I was getting nothing. Um, tried raising the offers. I went up 10%. Um, still nothing. So at that time, I made a decision. It was the, I replaced that county for the time being with another county. So obviously, <laughs> not stopping mailing, we're just shifting somewhere else because, you know, I think sometimes there's cycles, um, you know, and I'm, I'm going to remail to that county again. Um, I'm just kind of giving it a little bit of time. We'll, we'll go back through and reassess everything um, and try to hit it again. But, you know, sometimes these things just like sales, they go in cycles. So, you know, some Parts of the year, you might have a really high response rate. Some parts you might have a low. I don't know exactly why, but, um, you know, and unfortunately, sometimes you could also be, you know, hitting your first mailing to that area when people just aren't responding for for some reason, too. So um, sometimes you got to, you know, keep pushing forward and see, you know, what happens. Um, but, you know, at the same time, know when to stop or, you know, fully readjust when the time comes to, because you don't want to, uh, you don't want to invest too heavily, or you don't want the, what is that, sunk costs, um, you know, in a county, it's not working, because there's so many counties, too, so if it's not working, try another one. Yeah, yeah, Mimi Schmidt, what, what's your take on uh, poor response rates? I love when I hear, when uh, people I look up to, or my mentors, when they're, they have when they struggle too, because then it makes me feel like, oh, okay, it's not just me, right? I, um, and I think it's important when you do find a good spot where you are mailing well to still continue to test the market and send out low offers periodically too to see what you can get, because I've always found you can get some good treasures, right? But um, I'm, I'm kind of struggling with something similar where I'm having a hard time pricing my mailers right now. I'm sending in a new county and um, none of the land platforms have this county's land. And the county itself doesn't offer sales data. So I'm just kind of going off the assessor's value and I figure I'll mail and if I get a poor response rate, I know I'll need to raise it up, right? So I'm starting to get some responses and um, I just, I always learn something from mailing, right? I just have to keep doing it and I'll learn right over my mailings where I need to be with that county. So, is what it is. Yeah, and you know, being as analytical as you are, Mimi, are you still shooting for a three to five percent response rate, or has that? Around buy uh, one. I want to buy one per hundred. Yeah. One per hundred. Okay. All right. Great. Uh, Eric, how about you? Yeah. So I think um, it's definitely. I've run into those types of situations where you know the response is, is nothing or very small. Um, and kind of what I've learned over time is that when I go to a new area, I like to um, kind of test my pricing by taking say two, 200, 250 offers and um, varying that price by 
maybe a hundred dollars or so uh, for like four different tiers. So we might go um, offers at 900, 1,000, 1,100, and 1,200, just as an example. And sometimes that can really help me kind of see where the sweet spot is. Um, you know, offers might come back at 900, but they might also come back at 1,200. It allows me to kind of look at that and assess, um, you know, where the next set of offers should be in terms of pricing. So that's one way that, um, that I try and, I guess, get some extra data with a small mailer. I, I love that strategy. Uh, Zenmaster. How about uh, you? I, well, I think there's a lot of great lessons to be learned here. And I think that uh, one of them being, you know, you know, Tate, Mimi, seasoned land investors. So this is not going to rock their boat. They're going to adjust accordingly. When people are new, that's why that they should try to go to areas where there's an over abundance of land investors and people and known comps because you know if you were working this in the beginning it might be disheartening to you right and you you may uh think well this doesn't work right well it does work sometimes you just have to know how to read the signs uh, so uh, i think that's a good lesson like for people listening that are new this is why you choose an area that is like full of comps full of uh other investors that we know there's no saturation we know as you always say mark we'll run out of money before you run out of land so go where those people are but when you get seasoned you know then you go somewhere else and you because you want to explore like we've done that recently we got we got the opposite we got flooded with uh accepted offers so we know we were offering too much so we we adjusted accordingly so i think that you know you you definitely have those things that happen and you learn from them but probably in the beginning uh you'd want to really stick to something like what scott todd shows like the model in flight school of going to where the people are and and using those people as your source for comps and and so on and so forth. So that's, this is a really great topic. Yeah. I mean, wouldn't it be great, Mike, if there was a way to have like a seasoned land investor, maybe someone who's done like over 700 land deals, you know, take you by the hand and just kind of walk you up that land investing mountain like a yeah. ship. That's why we were talking the other day, uh, Scott Boss and I on the Facebook live, we said, that's how you start halfway finished. You start like, you know, like you're already halfway done when you start with flight school because you, you skip over all of this, beginning stuff that gets people muddled up and confused. You have a Sherpa that, that can lead you. So absolutely. It, it is awesome. Yeah. So that leads me to the segue. Today's podcast is sponsored by flight school. If you want to learn more about how to get into flight school and actually come out of the gate with a great response rate on your first mailing, do your county research correctly, get everything step-by-step step, and have the best in the business teach you how to do it step-by-step step. as a class, go to landgeek.com forward slash training and learn more about flight school. So that leads me to you, the professor, the brain. Well, I, I mean, there's so much great advice on here, right? Like how, how, do you, how do you compete against like what everybody else is saying? I mean, you, you really can't really compete, but you can, I mean, like I would, just, I guess I would just say that, listen to what everybody said, try all these different things. But at the end of the day, one, you have to have faith and uh, a little bit of patience. It's a lot like fishing. You just kind of throw the, the fishing pole out there, the bait out there, and you see what, what comes back to you. And if you didn't get anything, well, then you reel up the pole, and then you look, and you're like, oh, crap, the bait's been gone. How long has it been gone? I, get, I guess someone stole the bait. Or in this case, it's like, well, I guess I didn't have the right bait, because that happens sometimes too. The right bait offer price. Um, I would just also question, because I see this a lot of times, is that, People, people make decisions from a very, and I, I know Tate didn't do this, but people do make decisions based on a very economical uh, approach. And what I mean by that is, is they, they try to choose like the most affordable thing. Great example is standard mail mark. You know, like today, you, you know, I see people all the time, they're like, I just want to mail standard mail because standard mail is like 50 something cents a piece versus 83 cents or whatever it is. But the reality is, this is not the same thing. So you got to go back to the basics. You got to you got to question everything when you're not getting these response rates. You got to question everything. It's not just the offer. It's, I mean, did you use did you use standard mail or not? I mean, I don't know. I mean, some people say that standard mail works. I think standard mail works, but you got to mail out a boatload more. One, it's not always delivered. It's you know not forwarded if someone moves. It takes three weeks just to get the standard mail there. That's the delivery time versus first class mail, which is a week. 
there's a difference there economically speaking that it, it just doesn't make any sense to me from a business standpoint to save a few pennies when in fact I'm going to make thousands when I sell this property. Second, continuing that, that line of question, everything, you got to question like your offer letter. I mean, is your offer letter unique? Do you, does it need to be unique? I mean, it doesn't necessarily have to be unique, but maybe you should try something different. So is that whole AB testing? You should try everything, tweak things and see what works for your business. No, absolutely. I love it. And um, I, I couldn't agree more. I think what everybody said was, was really outstanding about their sponsor rates. I know Tate loves the fishing analogy since he's like uh, a professional fly fisherman. So <laughs> Tate, do you think the fishing gives you a advantage in land investing? Uh, I don't know. I, I mean, yes, I should tell my wife that I need to fish more because it'll make me better at work. So yes, I would 100% agree with that. So yeah, fishing, if, if you're an angler, you're going to be a better land investor. It's proven. There you go. There you go. So I, I think it's interesting. Let's go back to Mimi on her case study. So Mimi, you're working in New County, is that right? Mm -hmm. Yep. And I started just with general ads to the area to see what kind of response I would get. And I was overwhelmed with literally, I'll put up just three general ads. Hey, I've land, you know, give me a call. And I'm getting like five leads for every three ads. I'm shocked. And um, so I thought, okay, so I'm going to check this county out. Looking on Land and Farm, Land Century, Land Watch, Lands of America. Yeah. I can't find any comps. I'm looking on Zillow. There aren't many comps. And I've called the county. They don't have sales data. I can get the whole tax roll, the delinquent tax roll, but I can't get sales data. So I even talked to an appraiser yesterday, and um, she says she has a hard time. So I'm just winging it, right? I'm just going to go with the appraised value. And, and my first mailer went out in December. I'm starting to get the response back. And so maybe if this I'll give it a couple more weeks, maybe two or three more weeks, and then I'll, I'm still trickling mailing there, but I'll probably raise it a little bit and see what I get. So I'm really excited because um, I'm even getting some calls in. Um, I'm, I have one today I'm excited about, but so it's just trial and error, right? I'll just, I'll do another mailing next month and uh, see how it goes. So I'm excited about the area. I can tell people want to buy and sell. I just have to determine what the, the, the dollar amount should be, what the offer should be. Yeah, no, uh, Bearline Aaron, what's your takeaway about that? Um, a couple things. One is um, the assessor's value. Um, it's usually a percentage of what they deem to be a fair market value. Um, and, you know, obviously it's assessed for taxation purposes. Um, you may be able to find out through the assessor's office like what their percentage is that they, you know, of retail value that they assess a property at, um, you know, it might be 20% or 30 or whatever, and then they tax on that value. So maybe you might be able to, you know, figure it out with some math um, based on that. They may not give you that information. I don't know. No, she was um, saying that they try to get within 5% and the state expects them to, to get within 5%. But uh, it's one of those states where you don't have to report back what you sold the property for. It, that's right. not public information. So she says she has a hard time getting it. So, yeah. Well, my other thought on it, too, was that, you know, if you're whatever value you're using to buy the properties, if you're buying them for, you know, pennies on the dollar and you're selling them for a percentage that you're comfortable with, then I guess you're making the market. You know what I mean? Like if, yeah. you know, if you're selling them for four times what you're buying them for, you know, yeah. even if it's not what a realtor would be able to get, you know, you're still, you're still working your model and it works. And I guess you can adjust over time, but it sounds like that County to continue the fishing analogy is like almost like one of these little ponds that's so full of bluegill that you can throw a hook in without bait on and you can pull out a fish, you know, so it might be a pretty good find. I hope so. Let's see. Yeah, Zen Master Mike, what's your your take on that? Well, first and foremost, it, it's uh, when we always talk about the uh, inefficiency of the land. Like, we just it's whatever you want to be number one, right? If you're happy, make I mean, you're make you're selling it and you 
I mean, you're buying it for whatever you're buying it for. You're making four, five, six, eight hundred percent. Then that's I don't. It doesn't matter to me what uh, the current. You know, it's the inefficiency of the market that we work in. So it, it can be whatever you want. And, and if I've ever had a similar situation like that, I have employed the use of uh, realtors. Well, I'll call them up and be like, Hey, I'm, I got this property over here. I'm thinking about. Uh, I'm thinking about either buying or selling um, and just wonder if you'd be interested in listing it. Cause a lot of times uh, they'll go out and do a free analysis, right? It depends where it is. And if it's, you know, obviously it's in the middle of nowhere, uh, Tickland, as we say, or, or whatever, you know, the B, B, B. B, <laughs> then B. they may not go, but yeah, but um, you can call as a potential buyer or seller and the uh, real estate agents will, uh, will, will definitely, um, will definitely, uh, you know, help you out. Yeah, it's a good idea. Thanks. Yeah, Eric, what's your uh, your take on that? Being the well, technician. Mimi said something really important that I want to make sure our listeners didn't miss. And that was, she mentioned she put test ads out for the county before she even mailed there. Okay, that's what helped her determine that she wanted to mail there. So, um, you know, that's, that's a key piece of county research, right? As you're trying to decide where you want to mail, think about getting some ads out there on Craigslist or wherever, advertising that kind of land and see what kind of response you get, because that's going to tell you a lot about, you know, can you sell this property if you acquire it? Yeah, that, that's really a great point. Absolutely. And, you know, even taking that a step further, when Mimi does acquire the land, um, before she even closes, she could pre-sell it because she's getting so many leads. So her ROI theoretically could be infinite. So that's always exciting. Uh, Big Papa. I love it when this happens. I love it when I find an area where there's not a lot of details, there's not a lot of comps because basically I can come in, like Mike said, and price it however I see fit. So Mimi, whatever you can get people to buy it at or whatever you can get it, people to sell you to it at, then find out what, you know, the, uh, the market is willing to pay for it and run with it. I mean, you can be the boss, right? That's the best part about this land business is it's not like traditional real estate investing where you can pull out the MLS and find all these details and these comps, you know, you learn or you learn what you're able to glean from the data that's, uh, it's, that's available. And a lot of it is trial by error. So I love this situation, run with it. And, you know, if you're a new listener out there, this probably isn't the ideal place to start, like, like we said at the beginning, but, uh, you know, there's definitely money to be made in these types of situations. What it shows is that we are given a list of rules that are a little more safe when we start, right? Find a place two hours from a city, right? Where there's a recreational, da 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 right? But it kind of shows that you can, once you are familiar with the process, you can start to break the rules and still find success too. Right. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. You know, kind of like Mimi's kind of like Neo in the matrix, you know, like, all right, that was a very geeky, obscure reference. Breaking the rules. <laughs> Anyways, Scott Todd, you want the last word on this? I mean, <sighs> I think you just got to keep doing it, right? Like keep doing it, learn from the mistakes. I was watching a video, you, Mark, have you seen these, um, these masterclass videos, uh, the masterclass.com has got like Gordon Ramsay yeah. and all these people. Well, I was watching a preview of one today, actually from, uh, Usher. And the thing about Usher is, and I, I, like he, he said this and I was like, oh, makes sense. But I think that people forget this. And what he said was, uh, I've made more mistakes than I've had successes. Think, think about that for a minute. So here's Usher, you know, world-renowned, you know, performer. And he's up there saying, I've made a lot of mistakes. But, and those mistakes have out, like I've made more mistakes than I have had successes. And I think what happens is people are afraid to make mistakes. And you know, you learn from making a mistake. And if you're not making mistakes and you're not making bad offer prices or you're not messing up your mailings because you're looking for perfection, th then you're not, gonna, you're not growing. You're not, you're not doing it because you're going to make mistakes along the way. And ultimately, that's how we all learn is from the mistakes, not from the successes, 
we, we achieve the success is because we gain experiences from our mistakes. Think about when we, I mean, not that we can probably remember learning how to walk, but you've seen babies learn how to walk. Like they, they're like, they are making mistakes. They're, they're doing missteps. They're falling down. And as much as you want to catch them, we all learn how, how to walk really and do everything else from falling down. So fall down, make a mistake, but take action and you'll learn. Yeah, that's, that's a, that's a really, really good point. And, um, you know, it's true. This is really what's magical about our market is that it is so inefficient and that we can go out to these counties and like Mike said, make our own market. Um, when I first started out, that's kind of what I did in this area of Nevada because I didn't know. I just thought, well, I'll just make it up. Here's a, a margin and it's kind of ridiculous and it's sold. And then I just kind of kept, you know, trial and error from there. But there are a lot of times on deals where um, I left a lot of money on the table and there's a lot of times on deals where uh, the pricing seems embarrassingly high. And I, you know, I was just making the market as I was going on. And uh, Mimi's going to do the same thing in this county, uh, it sounds like, which is really kind of cool. So that leads us to our tip of the week, a website, a resource, a book, something actionable where the art of passive income listeners can go right now, improve their businesses, improve their lives. We're not going to pick on Eric in 2019, which means... I'm just kidding, Mike. Mimi said she'd take the tip of the week. Hi. <laughs> um. Okay. Tip of the week. So I notice in, so like in my Facebook ads, I'll put uh, how far it is to get a beer or the grocery store, hardware store. And even on uh, long ads on Landmoto or Zillow.com, uh, I'll put uh, the cool things to go see in the area. So there's this website, it's called walkstore.com. And I've listened to a lot of this podcast, so I don't know if you guys have, I haven't heard it yet. So you go to walkstore.com and you enter the address of your property. Um, and it'll bring it up on a map. So I'm doing a Somerset Circle San Luis. I'm putting one in as we speak. Eight, one, one, five, two. And so if I say, press the map button, it'll bring it up on a map but then it'll show all the closest restaurants coffee bars bars groceries parks schools shopping entertainment errands right so i can go see if i zoom out a little bit it'll show me all the locations so what i've actually done is had my uh copywriter come out to walk score to learn a little bit about the area because i can press like on parks and i can get the 10 closest parks that are mapped closest to my property. And then she could get an idea. So if she's writing an avatar around hiking or fishing, something like that, she can see what's close, right? Um, so just something for ad content. Okay, so this is walkscore.com, live where you love. Yes. Just very, enter. very cool. Yeah, enter the address, press map, and then on the left side, it'll list for you all the closest, yeah, restaurants, coffee bars, groceries, parks, and all kinds of stuff. Wow. You can put this on your website. They've got a widget. Yes, you can. I just was looking at a real estate agent's website last week that she had integrated this into her website. Very cool. Very cool. Um, this is really cool, actually. Yeah. Well, it helps you learn about the area where your property is. And then, yeah. So I'm just going to type in. Easier, a resource to use. Because even if, like, if you press on parks in the area, and I, okay, then I click on the park, then it goes to that park, and it tells me some information about it even. So I'm learning a little bit more about counties that I've been in for a year and a half, that parks that I didn't even know existed there. So, you know, we're always looking for things to help make our ads more unique to help our stick rates and um, different in general. So there's some content. That's a great tip. I like this. Wow. We, we should, uh, 
send this over to the land geek VAs and have them incorporate it into due diligence when they're looking at properties. Well, they That's can definitely put right closest bar, closest grocery store, big box stores. Yeah. Right? Just, just more details. Right. Right. I like it a lot. I like it. Bearland Aaron, are you going to use this? I am going to use this. I like it. Ooh. You passed, Mimi. You passed. <laughs> <laughs> a, lot of, a lot of pressure. But it's no, this is, this is great. This is great. So um, I want to thank all the listeners. Hopefully everyone is getting a lot of value out of these roundtable podcasts. Um, and, uh, you know, we're going to start off 2019 just hitting the ground running and, uh, and providing lots more content every single week. So please subscribe, please rate, please review the podcast. It really helps. Send us a screenshot of that review to support at the And, uh, we'll send you, uh, the passive income launch kit for free. Um, is it my phone is ringing? All right. We'll send you the, the passive income launch kit for free. Uh, the $97 passive income launch kit. So please do that. And um, you guys ready to do this? One, two, three. Let, Let freedom, freedom ring. ring. All right. Thanks everybody.